So the way people talk about hope in our society, I don't really agree with. Because in our society, hope means I'm just going to flip a coin and hope it lands on heads. But we as believers know that hope means to look forward. And we look forward with confidence, with expectation, with anticipation. And this form of hope isn't based on a wish. It isn't based on a flipping of a coin. It isn't based on a maybe. It's based on a promise. <laughs> but what if that's how we approached it for people, that we gave them a chance to have the opportunity to look forward to the hope with confidence, expectation, and anticipation. You know, I know all of you in this room are, are leaders, uh, you're influencers, and you have the opportunity to affect our culture. What if hope is a way of life? And for us as believers, it is. But what if hope was a way of life? And you thought about it in a way that culture was a way of hope. Not a culture of flipping a coin that people could get to look forward to the hope with confidence, expectation, and anticipation because it's based on a promise, a promise kept by God, not on I hope it lands on heads. And take your Bibles and turn to Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, it says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And the center of our hope is our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. You know, the first church epistle written was Thessalonians. But it was put last because what about, it was about the return of Jesus Christ. And the last thing that was going to happen to the church is the gathering together. And the reason it was put first was because they had gotten away from looking at the hope. They had gotten away from looking at the return. And they were only looking to what was going on at the time. And they stopped looking at the return anymore. So Paul saw that, and he knew what Satan was trying to do. He was trying to discourage them from looking at the hope. So the uh, Apostle Paul wrote this epistle. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, We give thanks to God always for you, for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. I'm sorry, that was verse 2. Remembering without ceasing. And that word ceasing is careful attention. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your work of believing, and hope, and labor of love, I'm sorry, and the patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. But he remembered them without ceasing. Paul said he remembered their work of faith, their work of believing, and their labor of love. You know, they were part of the ministry. They were moving the word. And the adversary knew that. And he was trying to discourage them from, from doing so and looking toward the hope of the return of Christ. Verse 4, it says, Knowing, brother, beloved, your election of God, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Verse 6. <laughs> you know, it's just when I was reading this, you know, their, their culture, their, their work was a work of believing and a, and a labor of love, and they were looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ. That was the culture. And, I, and I'm sure the adversary did not like that. And he doesn't like it when we speak the word. Verse 6, 
It says, and he became, and ye became followers, imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction. You know, they received the word, but there was much affliction, much mental pressure going on. There was standing, but there was mental pressure that was affecting them. It says, with joy of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> they had mental pressures when they were standing. And, and that happens to us too at times. Pressures of life when they stood. And Satan didn't want them to stand and stay focused on the return. In verse 7 it says, so that ye were examples. And that's the word two posts. Type, it means type. You were the type to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. <laughs> But they were that type. They were the examples. Verse 8. It says, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord. <laughs> the word sounded out, the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your believing to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not speak anything. They patterned their lives and became examples of the word and of the and, and the Lord, and it sounded out. <clears throat> Verse 9: For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. <laughs> Verse 10: And to wait. <laughs> And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath which is to come. And we won't have to deal with the wrath because he'll gather us together before that happens, which is nice to know. But they were walking, they were examples and building a culture of hope. Each one is an example to someone. That's how it spreads. You know, uh, Cheryl messed me up tonight. I was hoping she was online and somewhere other than New York because wherever she is or wherever anybody else is that we know that we speak the word to, that the word is spoken to, mm -hmm. it's spread. Mm -hmm. It spreads. You know, and, and you here in Auburn and Skinny Atlas and Syracuse, you know, the word is being spread. In chapter 2. But we wait for the return of his son. We look forward to it with confidence, with expectation and anticipation. He will deliver us from the wrath before it comes. He will gather us together. Chapter 2, verse 1. It says, For yourselves, brethren, know our interest into you that it was not in vain. But even after that, we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated as. As you know, at Philippi, we were hold it. We were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of who? God. The gospel of God, not the gospel of Paul or me or anybody else. It was the gospel of God with much contention. And that word contention is, you know, the word agon. And, uh, but they were spoken to the, the gospel of God with much intention. For our exhortation, our calling aside was not of deceit nor of uncleanliness, nor in guile. Verse 4, But as ye were allowed, <laughs> we're allowed, let me just finish that verse, we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. Each person in this room is, we're, has been allowed to be put in trust with the gospel. We have the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. How cool is that, that God God thought us of, of, of us so much that he trusted us with the gospel. And to, to, to handle it properly and to rightly divide it. Um, even so we speak, we share it with other people. Why? To please God. We all need somebody to look up to, and that's God. We need someone to chase after, and that's Jesus Christ. And we all need somebody to look forward to, and that's Christ's return. Look in Acts chapter 1. You know, we get, if we didn't have the hope, I think eventually we would get tired. 
And it's the hope that keeps us moving. It's the hope of Jesus Christ's return that keeps us moving. You know, if when we're amongst each other and if one of us is feeling tired, hey, Jesus Christ is coming back. You know, and the light goes off again and go, wow, that day he's coming back for me. I have that token. I have God in Christ in me, the Spirit of God. In Acts chapter 1, I like that in the song. It said, come Jesus, come. I've been waiting so long. It's been a lot of years, but guess what? He doesn't matter. He's still coming back. <laughs> in Acts chapter 1, in verse 8, It says, but ye shall absolutely receive lumbano power after that Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. <laughs> ye shall, there is no doubt, you are the witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ in Judea, in Samaria, in Auburn, in Skinny Alice, in Syracuse, in Colorado, wherever there's a believer standing on God's word, we are witnesses. And that's why we want to build a culture of hope. Just think, you know, in Romans 12 too, remember I, I shared it a week, a couple of weeks ago, it says, be not conformed to this world, to the cultures. But what if one of those cultures was a culture of hope? That would be a good thing. Verse 9. It says, and when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received Lombano him out of their sight. You talk about a Netflix movie. How would this be for a Netflix movie that you're standing there and next thing you know, you're doing this. <laughs> and he, I mean, there's good news and bad news. We'll get to the good news and bad news. But, uh, <laughs> Wherever you are standing, speaking God's word is holy ground. You don't, you don't want to believe it? Take it up with the big man. Mm -hmm. where, you, where you stand and speak God's word, Jerry, is holy ground. <laughs> Verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, and as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in the white, white apparel, so again, it's in the Netflix thing. So you're going like this. Next thing you know, all right, you, you level out, and there's two, two men standing there. It's like, whoa. <laughs> oh, my God. He says, which all said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven shall absolutely so come, so return in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. He's coming back. That's a promise of God. Our hope, our hope is based on a problem, a promise. It's not based on a, a coin flip. It's not based on a maybe. It's not based on a wish. It's based on a promise. When the fullness of time has come, when God's spiritual clock says it's time, he will come back. Again, can you imagine standing there? And they were immediately given the promise of the hope. I mean, I probably would have been flipping out, seeing him <laughs> ascend, you know, like, now what do I do? But here's these two men saying, hey, don't worry, we got it covered. Give them, they, and they give them the promise of God that he is coming back. Look in 1 John chapter 3. So they were given the promise of the hope. Verse 2, chapter 3, verse 2. It says, Beloved. I've been... <laughs> these, uh, I've said this a few times about these words. These, they just get me. You know, it's like you're feeling anxious, all of a sudden... Beloved, okay, I'm calming down. It's like, <laughs> I just got warm and fuzzy. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. 
but it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, <laughs> we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're going to see our big brother, Jesus Christ, as he is. We have something to look forward to. And we can look forward to it with confidence, with expectation, with anticipation. Look in Romans chapter 8. In verse 24, it says, We are saved by hope. We are saved to hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Verse 25, But if we hope for that we are not, we, we see not, then do we with patience, with patience, wait for it. <laughs> we're saved, we're made whole with the return. And we wait with patience. Hope anticipates. We hope for what's in the future. It's not a coin toss. Look in chapter, chapter 4. Verse 16. It says, Therefore it is of faith, it is of believing, that it might be be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all that the seed to the born again not to that only which is of the law but to that also which is of the faith of Abram who is the father of us all as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, believed even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which he which be not as though they were. Verse 18, who against hope believed in hope? I mean, Abram was an old guy and he believed God, the promise that God made that he was going to have a kid even when Sarah was up in years. But he believed. It says, who against hope believed as in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken? So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in believing, he considered his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. Oh, my God. Neither yet the, the deadness of Sarah's womb. It says he staggered not, he judged not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He was strong in faith. The first, the last act of Christ's coming was, was the ascension. And the first act, when he comes back, will be the dissension. And uh, to gather the church, the body, the born-again believers. Hope is always future, and it's the love that activates both our believing for the present and hope for the future. Look in Galatians chapter 5. Verse 1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Hmm. Stand fast, that's uninhibited, with no fear. Verse 5, For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness. By what? Faith. By faith, by believing. We wait for the hope by believing. Verse 6, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith believing which worketh by love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> believing worketh by love. Look in Romans 15.
In verse 13, it says, Now the God of hope, the God of the hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. We abound. <laughs> to speak in tongues, you're abounding. You know, you have hope, you have joy. And, you know, we're word conditioned, we're not world conditioned. And we abound in hope by way of the Spirit, by speaking in tongues. Look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Despite all the same better days. <laughs> so. Verse 1, it says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk. You know, one of the, my foundation for how I ought to walk was power for abundant living. Taught me everything I needed to know back then. And over through the years now have I continued to learn and grow because of Great believers, great pastors, reverends. Yes, we have. But we walk to, and how do you ought to walk and to please God as you would abound more and more? Mm -hmm. Verse 12, it says that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. <laughs> you have lack of nothing. God supplies your needs. Do not be conformed to the world, to the cultures. Verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. God wants us to be wise. It says to be not ignorant. You know, I, I've, I've come, we've all come across people who have lost people and we've lost people in our lives and I don't know how they do it without the hope knowing that Jesus Christ is coming back one day and that if that person was born again you'll see them again I don't I I just can't comprehend how they how they live life verse 14 for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, shall not precede them which are asleep. You know, that the word that coming there is that personal presence of the Lord. And we won't perceive uh, those. I mean, we know there's nobody in heaven. No, there's, there's just nobody there. Verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of, the God, of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. <laughs> Verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We're to comfort one another with these words. You know, have you ever said to somebody who's lost somebody, I don't know what to say, there's really not much to say, but there really is. You know, at the right time, speak in the word, and if the person believes in Jesus Christ in Romans 10, 9, and 10, and that they're born again of God's Spirit, one day they will see. I mean, we have people in our fellowship who've lost people, and you know, the only thing I know to say to them is that you're going to see your spouse one day when Jesus Christ comes back. It's a promise of God. It's not a, a coin toss. It's not a wish. It's not a maybe. It's a promise of God. Look in chapter 5, verse 1. It says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, Ye have no need that I write unto you. We don't need to know. It's God's business. It's already been fulfilled. Pentecost came and went, and the Spirit was sent. Verse 2, 
For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with the child, and they shall not escape. Has anybody, has anybody got an email from a thief saying, Look, on the 14th, I'm going to yeah. ransack your... Yeah? <laughs> She's back. <laughs> no, the thief doesn't let you know when he's coming. No. But we know that he's coming. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be in darkness. <laughs> Thanks, Grace. <laughs> Verse 3, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that day should overtake you as a thief. It's not going to overtake us. We're children of light. You are children of light. <laughs> it's not going to overtake you. Verse 5. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, not of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep shall sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith. I think we heard about that tonight. The breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. <laughs> the day of the Lord will be coming. The thief doesn't send, as I said, doesn't send an email. He's surprising the world, but he's not going to surprise us. We are not in darkness, so there's no need to worry. Your big brother, Jesus Christ, is coming back. <laughs> and we glow in the world. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. You're a child of light, so build a culture of hope. Speak the word. Continue to speak the word to people. Wow, I better keep going. Let's look in uh, Revelation chapter 9. In Revelation 9, verse 9, it says, And they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of, of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had, the <clears throat> they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their, their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the, in the Hebrew tongue is Abad, Abadion, but the Greek tongue hath his name. One, one woe is pa post, past, and behold, there come two woes more hither. Verse 13, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horse, horns of the, of the golden altar, which is before God saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river. And the four angels were loosened, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, for to stay in the third part of men. And the, the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. <laughs> Look in, in 21. Chapter 21, in verse 1, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God of the heavens, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with the men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. In verse 4, and God shall wipe away all tears. What a day that will be. From the eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. In chapter 22, 
And we'll close here. It says, He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you all. So surely I come, Lord Jesus.